You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. And away we bloody go! <laughs> Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. It's the only podcast in the world that brings the firehouse kitchen table to you blokes. Hello! Oh God. Here How's go. that one, bro? That sounds like Benny Hill. It does. <laughs> All right, fellas, welcome back. We we actually missed you. No, we didn't. No, we did. We missed you guys. We did. We missed you guys. As always, I, I got my boy Ruffy here. He was just shot an eighty. Shot an eighty-one today on the links, bro. An eighty-one. That's like a scratch golfer. Well, I'm not close, how, but I don't know how his back is today. But yeah, it's a little sore. I just, little I mean, sore. literally walked in the door like. 20 minutes ago. Yep. We grabbed a little grub, came on. We got we got PD Shalom PD up there. Coming coming straight Shalom. to you. Coming straight to you from Dix Hills. Shalom. How are yep. you? Dix yeah, Hills. Man. We got a good one. That's food. where it is. Dix Hills. I couldn't remember Dix that. Hills, Dix Hills, South Carolina. I've been yep. everywhere. Yep, yep, yep. We uh <laughs> we got a little thing going here tonight. Uh we're going across the pond, bro. We're gonna go a little international, get a little international flavor here. Recommended to uh, us by one of my favorite guys in the whole wide world, the Don, Chief LaFamina. And he's always in there. He's always in the uh, chat. You guys know him. Just stays low profile. He's a low profile. He stays in the yeah. weed. He's a guy who stays in the weed. I'm going to give the Rev a shout out in the in the super chat here, giving us a evening, Kev Lou and Shalom Pete. All right, Rev. Oh, nice. the Rev in the house. Thanks, Thanks for the love, Rev. Yeah, wow, man. We're doing super chat. chat. Ever. 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 Yeah, so we got a little guy. Let me just clear something right off the bat. We had a little discrepancy there. He's not actually from the London Fire Brigade, but he's close enough. I screwed he up. Talks, he talks uh, some crazy English. You might have hard uh, time understanding. <laughs> I couldn't understand what he was saying two minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's bring my man on right here. My man, we call him Snowy. You could call him Nigel. Or you can call him Nigel Snowy Kind, or you can call him Mr. Kind, or you can call him whatever the hell you want. There he is! Hello, dude. Nice helmet. Oh, I love it. There he is. There he is. You're not going to keep that helmet on the whole time, are you? No. no. <laughs> yeah, man. We got oh, Nigel. Shit. Uh, I had to change it up tonight. I'm going with a little nice Jameson. Hat, kid. Oh, oh, nice hat, Oh, nice. We deliver. We nice. deliver. Yeah, we go across the pond. Yep. I'm going with Stein. Oh, oh, and the cup, too. What are you drinking tonight, though, Nigel? Uh, a little bit of bourbon, Buffalo Trace. Buffalo nice. Trace. Bourbon. I got a little Jamos. What do you got, Ruffy? Matcha. All right, before we get into deep, because Pete's going to yell at me for not following the steps. Mm. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pete. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. First, what are we brought to you by tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, we are brought to you by GettingSaltyApparel.com. That's right, the one and only place where we bring the firehouse apparel to you. <sighs> Much like the kitchen table, we bring you the best in firehouse t-shirts, all kinds of accessories, koozie uh, cup liners and cups and shot glasses. Hey, Louie, you posted that uh, picture of that awesome uh, lighter. The lighter, we got them back. They're back, baby. Blowing the lighters are back. Yeah, Bl- blowing, blowing it out forever. Blowing it out the third floor. Hey, listen, you know what? That's a really unique lighter. I actually kind of, I want to kind of scoop one up if I have to pay for it or whatever, you know. Get it on, oh, cramp up. I'm hey, out right. of fluid. I would do it, but I'm out of fluid. Hey, oh, there it is. There it is. Not well, anyway, guys, you know us. You know the show. If you want to support us and support the show, head on over to www.gettingsaltyapparel.com. Thank you. Sweet. Pete, give me the word of the day. Give it to this me. This is good. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the word of the day is wanka. Wanka. Oh, it's wanka. wanka. Snowy. Snowy, Snowy, what's a wanka exactly? What's a wanka? Explain that. Uh, A (laughs) masturbatorial situation. What is it? (laughs) He's laughing. Basically, you're a wanka. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we call it. You know, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to yeah, say the terminology wanker. here. I'm not going to say the term, but uh, you know, uh, you know, some of us might call him a J.O. You know? Oh, a J.O. All right. All right. We want to talk a lot about this. This man has got, I, yeah. I said 50 years in the, in the fire service, but he's got 
he had to correct me and say it was like 40, I don't know what it was, 46? Yeah, 45. 40 yeah, yeah. When you get past 40, you don't even count anymore. 40. Don't even bother yeah. counting. Yeah, so he's got 40 some odd years in the fire service. And uh, he actually started in 1969. 60, how old were you in 69, Ruffy? One. One. I Six, was one, too. 69 you got on, right? Yep, absolutely. 16-year-old. You, you were in the... As a, a junior, junior fireman in, in 1969. Right. Yeah. Do you have the bell bottom pants and the long hair? What was going on there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't have the long hair. Um, I, I did have some bell bottoms and some, um, <laughs> some <laughs> you know, the usual tank top crap. And, yeah, know, man. The 70s, oh, well, the 60s, 70s uh, fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. It's I've, funny uh, because we have you, we do actually have your probie picture. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Hold on one second here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that far off. It's not yeah. that far off. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we have your whole we we have your whole proby class right here as well. You Look do. at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a group. What a group of men. Our charges right the there. Penines. Excellent. Mm. The Pennines. All right. Beautiful. Nice. What time right, is it over there, Coops? It's almost midnight over it's there, man. A little past midnight, actually. Just past. It's seven I, after. Are you gonna are you all right? You're gonna fall asleep? I'm oh, me? You, you might have to oh. uh... <laughs> we got nobody to nudge you over there, uh, Snowy. No. Hey uh, <laughs> Nigel, do us a favor. If you wouldn't mind moving a little closer to your uh, microphone there, yeah, on your on your yeah, Coops, give him give him a little time to answer because there is definitely a delay. Really? Hello? There you go. No, no, it's Hello. good, but it's just, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I know you have a delay. Yeah, you, you, Coops definitely has a, a delay. No doubt about that. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. What? All right. So 69, and then you get on the real J-O-B as a full-fledged firefighter in 1971 at the age of 18 years old. Absolutely. Yep. Wow. Fantastic. Awesome. And uh, so you started – in in a in a slow place, right? Uh, let's see, where, where Chesterfield. Is that? Chesterfield, which is what? Where is that roughly? It's just uh, twelve miles south of Sheffield, which is middle of the country. Basically, it's middle of the England. Sheffield, uh, Sheffield. Yeah. Sheffield, it's got to be Sheffield. burning over there, bro. Oh, it's got to be busy over there, no? Sheffield. <laughs> is that just is that just <laughs> absolutely south of, <laughs> south of Livonia? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> right around the corner. New York. It's East New yeah. York. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you're only doing about 800 runs a year, and you're going out of your bird. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, well, a young guy. You know, I want to see some. Uh, I want to see some fire. So you want to dance with the devil a little yeah. bit. I hear yeah. you. So after, after two and a half years, you moved to Sheffield. Yeah. That's to, uh, division so you, go, so you go from 800 runs to roughly 3,500 runs. A, Yes, yeah, that's that's, uh, it. that's a big jump. Yeah, a lot of just busy. It was a lot of, a lot of fires back then. Yeah, we had uh, a lot of uh, derelicts and uh, slum clearance. Uh, Sheffield was getting rehoused after the sixties decay. A right. bit like you know, like New York. We all went through the same sort of scenarios. Uh, we got a lot of slum clearance, and uh, people were setting fire to derelict properties and. And basically, we were learning our craft. Right. What what kind of structures were you running into? What, what are the exactly. buildings? Well, like? we, well we, we've got a, a, a mixture. We've got a lot of uh, terraced row uh, housing, but these were uh, our terraced is uh, built of uh, stone, uh, well, brick and slate roofs, uh, not like your guys with the timber frame. Uh, huh. We've got a lot of brick structure and uh, stone structures. So it's um, it's a bit different um, to your construction, building construction. How but many it, stories, it, in, in Snowy? How many stories usually? Um, the the housing was two, two stories. Three two stories. stories. I like two stories. Of, <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of high rise as well. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, so we we were quite a, a high rise city. We got a lot of uh, fifteen story um, um, project. Type buildings like you've got in uh, in Brooklyn and in that area. So, yeah, we we, we so we, we we perfected our skills on high rise, you know. So, 
we're doing we're doing numerous things. Plus, we've got the heavy, heavy engineering. You know, we've got the steel mill. You know, the steel plants and. Oh, um, you were saying that, though, because that's uh, in your area. Is a lot of steel uh, manufacturing. Steel works, there, right? yeah. Down the east right. uh, east end of uh, Sheffield, we've got the all the industrial uh, steel manufacturing, and uh, that sort of. Uh, you go to many fires in those plants there, and, and, yeah, and, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, labels uh, spilling and uh, going into the hydraulic uh, piping underground. It uh, we we used to back uh, another station up called Darnell. They they were there instantaneously because that's their area. But we came in from the city centre and backed them up with um, you know manpower and foam because we right. had a lot of foam on that sort of. I was, actually, I was actually going to ask you that, Snowy. How many? So, how many companies or firehouses, or how many companies are there in in Sheffield? This there used to be eight in Sheffield City, uh, and used to be twenty eight in the county. Uh, to Sheffield City had eight stations uh, for the to cover the the city itself. But then we all we moved into the uh, the county, which had got twenty twenty eight stations. So. So we were looking at pictures of your firehouse. You guys were running a, quite a few apparatus out of that firehouse, right? Yeah, five. We had five, two, two basically engine companies, which was uh, water ladders, and then two aerials, uh, uh, hydraulic platform, and uh, a turntable ladder, which you were aerials, and an, and an ET, which we call you, you call a rescue. Right. Uh, well, uh, roughly, we were talking about it. You weren't in the room yet. Uh, about these uh, hydraulic platforms, Pete. Pull, see if you can find a picture of that that rig, the hydraulic platform. Oh uh, yes, the hydraulic. It's, platform. A, it's a really different looking rig. I never well, saw. I, it I don't have the hydraulic platform. Um, you I did. actually. Well, we yeah, had this right when you were venting the roof off of the yeah. hydraulic platform. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, yeah, right. That's an articulated boom. If you've got two big booms and a small tip boom there, which I'm stood in the cage. Uh, venting a, a fire in 1975. Uh, yeah. a... Dude, this thing looks like a crane. It, <laughs> like it, it, it articulates like a crane, bro. Mm. And uh, it's got a tiny little platform on it. And there's how Nigel. How right? tall is it? Yeah, that's a pretty cool picture, Nigel. It, 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 85, 85, 85 feet. feet. Yeah, that's what that'll go up to. That was about, that was only about 60 foot up. So it right. wasn't that bad. And look at you swinging that axe like yeah. You I was going to say one arm winging it, huh? <laughs> yeah, one arm winging it right there, bro. Absolutely. Nice. Must yeah. have been the right arm, you know what I mean? A little extra. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm left-handed as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to switch it up once in a while, right? <laughs> yeah. PD, I think we had we had another picture in there somewhere, PD, of it. It, it was you a know, picture. Yeah, we did, but it was way too small, too small. so that we couldn't. Oh, couldn't was it? Spend... Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See if you can I'm find sorry, one I on the internet. A, I screwed up with a photo. That's no all right. Worries. No, no problem whatsoever. Nigel, how many how many guys are on on the job? Like total, and then how many guys do work in a firehouse? You know, go through that a little bit so we kind of get right, an well, idea. South Yorkshire, when when at, at, at its uh, sort of heyday in South Yorkshire, back in the uh, the seventies and eighties, we had about twelve hundred firemen in South Yorkshire. Today, it's been uh, cut back down to about six hundred. Oh wow, that's almost yeah, half. Man. Yeah, there's, there's there's been a drastic cut in manpower. Um, Why is that? It's less work it, or money? No, we it's oh. budgets and and things like that. It's uh, we get you get penalised for spending too much money. Yeah, man, those so, bean counters—they're such wankers. Mm. Yay! Oh, yeah. Yay! Oh, that's the I really like that. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, is there is there still uh, vacants there? Like, uh, are, are there still a lot of vacants, or everything's built up now? Everything's used up now. We, we, Sheffield's getting a bit better. Um, we're going through a, a bit, well, we, we were going through a bit of a, um, a, a boom. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we, we're getting a lot of high rise uh, accommodation uh, built for the students because it's a big university university city now. We've got two universities: uh, Hallam and Sheffield University. Sheffield is like the brownstone one, the the uh, the Ivy League type oh, the, the Snooty folk. Yeah, um, we've we've had that since the 1900s, uh, and now the uh, there's been a lot of investment into uh, high rise accommodation for students, and uh, we're getting a lot of Chinese. Funnily enough, 
Really? God damn Asians, bro. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Now, oh. now. <laughs> got to make sure my wife ain't out there, bro. <laughs> For any of you new members who are just uh, tuning in, don't start marching in the streets, Kevin. You know why? You know why? Because today was a big march for stop the hate against Asians, and here you are. But, but oh yeah, me and my wife were down there. Yeah, well, that's the point. So Kevin's uh, Kevin's wife is an Asian. For all the new listeners, I'm busy, oh my I'm busy working, bro. I don't have time to fucking march. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is wrong. And he did, and he the, did wrong the wrong thing. thing. Mm, yeah. yeah, I know. Exactly. No marching today. You know, no, there's no like, marching. My favorite Asians are rooftop Asians. Those are the best ones. <laughs> rooftop Asians? You I don't, don't remember the, no, 90, uh, the 94 riots, do you? So they've been oh, investing a lot into uh, the educational universities and stuff. So, you know. Right. Definitely was coming back until we had this... Uh, this, for a this year. thing, this thing. Uh, yeah. So, how many guys were actually right on a rig there? What's your manpower look like when you pull well, up to basically, a Basically, uh, on a on a we call them rescue pumps now. Um, it's more like your squad, right? Uh, and uh, usually five five guys. Five, oh, that's, five that's pretty teams. heavy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, on an aerial, you usually use two: the driver and an operator or an officer in charge. That's it. So that's it. Two. That's it. Two. Yeah. Holy shit. Holy so God, how many right. uh let's say you get a a, a phone alarm for a, a, a report of a fire. What's showing up at that it's, box? It's, there? You, usually if it's in the city center you'll get uh two two uh pumps in eight. No, two pumps in five and another one in eight. So you get three three or four pumps coming and an aerial. If it's uh -huh. on the outlying districts you, you get less uh, you get a couple of couple of pumps. Now, what do they call it when they bang out the fire? What's the code that they make, give? A makeup. You make pumps ten. Well, make pumps three, four, or five. What the and hell did you just say? Well, what was that? A what? Make, it's a Speak American, man. What? Come on, man. Well, just the facts, man. It's, it's a, it's the th a third alarm is like a make pumps. Uh, was it ten something like that? All right, so listen, you were an officer, right? Well, they don't call them lieutenants. They call it. Why do they call it again? Le leading. I was a leading fireman. You're a lady fireman, which is like a lieutenant. Yeah. You're yeah. from you're you're riding the pump, but you pull up. You're the first guy there. Oh, there he goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, I one band. It. Is that what that yeah. means? One band. Yeah. All right. You pull up, and you see it's a fire. You get on the radio and you say what? Make uh, well, make pumps five or whatever the, the make pumps large, five. five. Yeah. That's all you get. Five. Five. I'm write that down. Rescue make a pumps. Make pumps five, dude, because we're gonna do a show just on signals they give. Dump the box, snow. That's a little lame. Strike the box. Make pumps five. It's <laughs> <Wow. laughs> a little lame. <laughs> yeah, dump the box has a certain thing to it. Yeah, but yeah strike, strike the box. Five. If you if you, make, if you make pumps five, you get a senior officer coming. You know, you get a, 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 a like basically a, a deputy chief. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Chief Steve so, shows up so, and he's like, "What the hell is going on here? You're supposed to hit the so, make pump six for Christ's sake!" <laughs> so you didn't really like to make him that high because then you could keep it to yourself. Ah, oh, I see what you're you saying. Know, keep, yeah. keep the gaffers, keep the bosses away. So keep can, those wankers yeah. away. You know. What yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. You catch me, didn't you? All right, so we, we got the makeup. What's going on? So you were telling me before, how many in, in the station you're at? Division Street? Is that what you said? Yeah, we had 23 on a watch. We 23 had... guys. At Holy a watch. shit, that's got to be fun. Yeah, but, uh, baby. Basically, we had uh, 16 <laughs> nice, on duty at the time because they take a resilience out with for training and annual leave, you know, for vacations. So we usually rode 16 guys, uh, five on each of the pumps, Right. And uh, two on each of the specials, which was the hydraulic platform, the turntable ladder, or the ET, which is the eight. rescue. How many how many guys were, were turning out in the rescue? Two? Two. Two. Holy crap. And what are they doing with two guys? Is that two plus an officer or just two? No, just just two. Just the oh, driver and the officer. Shit. So what are they gonna do if they pull up well, with, well the, all the equipment on the rig, everybody can use it. In in the in, in the uh, in, well, in the UK fire brigade, you can use every piece of equipment usually uh, that you've got. Oh, uh, so everybody everybody is trained on all the equipment. Yeah. So when that yeah. thing rolls, everybody goes. You no, know, everybody knows what to use. So uh, to uh, use. let's say a rescue goes on a box for an auto extrication. Yeah, well, you, well, you get um, 
rescue pumps as well. You get two guy two pumps going with it as well. So so you get two pumps, which is like an engine. I like that. Yeah. Two, two pumps. I only get two and, pumps uh, in ever. Yeah, so. Pete always gets two pumps and he's done anyway. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He's good for yeah, two and then he's done. <laughs> I get those Swedish pumps, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah, baby. He's long Whoa. dipping. Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. So you get two pumps in the rescue, and, and yeah. the guys on the pumps, they know how no, to operate. Uh, yeah, the gear. They know how to ev operate everything on there. Yeah. Well, that, okay. this is we're going back in time now because nowadays you've got a rescue pumps, and uh, they've got all the same equipment, basically, as the, re as the, re as the rescue, as the ET. So they're uh, basically, you said the squad. They're basically yeah, squads. Yeah, basically, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. All right. So, Pete, what about this piece of uh, equipment? Roll out yeah. that other piece, Pete, that oh. I was like, I, I love this thing, bro. Oh, it's this a, is awesome. Did I call this a what again? It's a wheeled escape. A wheeled escape. So how how far does that ladder go? What's the height of that ladder? It's 30 feet. I was going to say, feet. it's 30 feet right there. 50, at least. 50, 50 feet. So it takes what four guys to operate yes, that bit, boy? It does, yeah. And four where guys. is that? Is that being pulled by a rig, or is that where is no, that? It, it goes on the back of the rig. It, oh, it I think we had a picture of that, Pete. Uh, this thing hanging yeah, off the back of the rig. I do, sir. I so do. the wheels are on the ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> holy shit! And that's on the rig all the time, even today. Yes. That's not an old picture, no, no, right? No, that's no, no, they're gone. That's, they've gone. They're oh, gone. all right, just, all right. They, that, I just thought I'd show you a bit of history. You know, they, yeah, they, no, they, I like it. It's when cool. did they get rid of that, Snowy? 1978. 78, all right. That's like the scary ladder. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you need a billion. Four guys yeah, to operate that thing. Yeah, I'm sure they were. They could probably get them at the here. position. Oh, shit. Yeah, they are that. in action killing themselves, these poor bastards. My goodness. Wow. That's a good picture, Pete. So well, what, what would I that be attached it. to? Would that be attached to a, a pump? Yes, would, basically, so, yeah. So you can turn basically an engine or a pump into an aerial ladder by yeah. carrying that thing. You oh, yeah. throw it off. Yeah. And well, now you have your... that in, We used to use that sort of ladder when it was really windy because they were stable, you know, because because of the wheels and everything. Right. We, we used to get turned out when there was uh, like high winds and stuff like that and uh, a lot of dangerous structures or anything. We could use that where other ladders couldn't be used. You know, your normal ground ladders, they couldn't be used. Right, uh, because they'd be blown over with those. You got what does that thing? Base. What does that thing weigh, Snowy? Uh, about half a ton. <laughs> what? Yeah, That's how many guys? The guys in the four, FDNY that would be guys. off the job from from oh, working yeah. that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! But that's a light. That was a light one. I get, I can tell you a story about. I we when I was a junior fireman, we had wooden ones called Bailey Escapes, and they were a ton. They 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 Holy they weighed a, a twenty hundred weight, which is a ton. Oof. And when when I transferred from she uh, Chesterfield to Sheffield, uh, I'd never seen a, a lightweight uh, escape like that one. So we went out in the yard to drill, and uh, they, they put me on the uh, the carriage wheel, which is that big wheel there, and which told us to slip and pitch it. So we slipped and pitch it, and then you you rotate and. To rotate it, you hold on to the wheel, and then the other guy will right. He's the moving it one stays the same, yeah. and one moves yeah. right. So, as we're moving it round, I where I went with that much effort, I picked the bloody thing up, and it looked like it was going to fall over because I'd only been used to a really heavy ladder. And this this sod was so light, it was like, Holy shit, and it was like, <laughs> Dang, put that fucking thing down. <laughs> it's like, shit, me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh... so I, I didn't mean to pick it up. You know, it's so light. You know? What was it? It was aluminum, I'm assuming. It was, it, yeah, it was, well, it, a metal, it was a steel escape, but it was oh, uh, right. not that light. It was wow. aluminum, which is what we have on our other ladders, the lake on the... Right. What's the longest the ladder you have now? Do you know what, what they carry 45, out of 45 feet. 45 foot. Oh, they had, yeah. uh, as a, was it a junior? You were throwing yeah. a 45, yeah. right? There's a picture yeah. of him throwing a 45 as a junior. Oh, I'll find it. Oh, hey, uh, oh, was, was there a sign on the back of that other thing that said medical leave on it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> There's a 45 right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Son of a gun. My good. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. Look at the other guys have the poles too, right? Yeah. Yeah. The handling poles. Yeah. Handling poles. Yeah. That yeah. was 45 foot. Where was, was I got a hand? I got a handling pole. 
Look at oh. those tiny legs. Hey. Put on, put on. That's it. Put on. That's it. All right, Rocco. <laughs> look at look at those sorry, killer. Sorry. Okay, look what, at what? those killer uh, those killer helmets and and the look shiny the pants and the boots. I like boots. the shiny pants. That's that you can go right to the club with those. I like the buttons <laughs> on the coach. Look at the buttons on the coach, bro. <laughs> All right, Rocco. Oh, yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. That Yo, really hit. Where, where else was it? Must have been another sign on that ladder that said "Drop nuts here." Right? <laughs> <laughs> or pick them up, either yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, leave your nuts here. Yeah, yeah oh. it was. It was a. It was a. It was a challenge to use that son of a bitch. Yeah. I see guys are bitching about a thirty-five footer, right, dude? You kidding oh, me? Oh yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get the thirty-five up. Yeah, try that other thing, man. You shit me. Wow. The Brits are hardcore. The working I don't know class if we had Brits those. are hardcore people, my friends. I don't know if the FDNY had those ladders back in the day. I don't. I, I tell you the truth, I don't know. With those, well, you know, know, side angles and stuff like that. You know, like uh, they, they didn't have those uh, those other yeah. things. What was that other thing called? The a what rescue? What rescue escape? Yeah, yeah wheel, no, wheel escape. escape. Wheel oh, wheel escape. escape. Wheel escape. A wheel escape. Yeah, we never had that, bro. I've never seen that. No, that was predominantly uh, British. That, that stems from uh, they used to position them in the streets uh, um, back in the 1800s. Uh, they would they'd be positioned at uh, street corners in certain places like London and, and Sheffield, and you, you just get a load of guys to wheel it to a fire. Usually, right. police officers were trained <clears throat> in that sort of thing. Um, so. Nigel, one of the one of our uh, esteemed. Uh, uh, chat members who are is also a fellow countryman of yours, Chris Burke, is asking uh, if you wore the old <coughs> brass helmets and explain to us what these old brass helmets were, please. <laughs> My word, I, I I might be old, but I'm not that old. Hey, <laughs> so that would be like asking if you you rode the horses to the yes, uh, fire yeah. or whatever. Absolutely, right? I, I, did, gotcha. I have actually worn a brass helmet in ceremonial occasions. It was a, a brass helmet. Um, I, I should have sent you a photo, but um, the, the the brass helmet was um, stolen by uh, Massey Shaw, which was the chief of London, from the French. The French used to wear them in the 1850s, uh, military style, and then the, the and, and fire brigade. And then uh, Massey Shaw, who was the chief of London, stole them from the, the design from the French. And uh, it just went epidemic across Britain, and, and every every fireman then wore a brass helmet, which had got a big comb on it, and uh, it uh, it protect. That's it. That's that. But that's an Australian one. That's New South Wales. But oh, okay. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's but pretty, that's that's, the, much, that's the gist of it. That's that's what a brass helmet looks like. Wow. <clears throat> uh, pretty, you can see the you can ass. see the comb. Uh, just looks like to, something to, that uh, like uh, it looks like the Kaiser wore that yeah you know, yeah Germany or something you yeah. know like or Maximus Meridius or something. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will have yes. my vengeance in this life for the next yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. badass uh, though yeah that thing won't conduct heat will it <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep it shiny you gotta <laughs> keep it shiny that's why you, that's why you shiny. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, Chief Steve, uh, I heard used to really be a a, a stickler for shining on uh, brass yeah. helmets. He was big on on helmet shining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was you, Kim. <laughs> uh, oh, look, nice. Steve! Nice. Oh, he's anywhere, throwing it, man. Come on, anywhere man. you go, bro, you could be in England, you could be in Germany. He's the ball breaking it. is universal, bro. I love it. I love. Polish that. your helmet, Coob. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm no stranger. My mother's probably listening, but I oh, know the, sorry, the, reason, the reason she knows. I'm no stranger to polishing my helmet, bro. Believe me. <laughs> I'm no stranger. I hope your mother's not watching. Kevin. <laughs> she is. Oh, She's going shit. like this now. Oh, like, I can't uh, believe he just I can't that. believe he did that, Kevin. I see you're bending your elbow. <laughs> and, uh, you're drinking too much on the show. <laughs> hey, hey, Snowy, how how many guys are there in the London Fire Brigade? If you know, do you know offhand? By the way, yeah, I think it's about four thousand. Uh, four thousand. Is Something it that like much? That. Yeah. Did. Wow. Um, I, I I don't know offhand. I should do, but no, no, uh, it's all right. I'm just figuring. I'm sorry, uh, I, I failed. I don't, how I far don't is that from you? One hundred sixty miles. miles. Holy. The same shit. as Albany from you. There you yeah. Go. Oh, all right. 
It's exactly the same as Albany. Yeah. Wow. Oh, New York. oh, Pete, you had that there? Next Chief Steve song, No Salty Helmets? Yeah. Next I'm not, we're going to do a Chief sport. Steve song in a, in a, in a, a Cockney bro. <laughs> <laughs> Polishing your helmet, <laughs> and, Ch and Chief will have his little leg uh, wrapped up in the video. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah there just you another, know. just another thing. The reason they got rid of uh, brass helmets it was because of electricity. Because uh, there were a lot of firemen getting injured because it used to be oh, no yeah. cap and case electric cable. So when there was a fire, the cables were released out of the the uh, the cover. And he used to fall on the fireman and electrocute him. Oh shit! And uh, and uh, there were a lot injured because of the uh, really? electric cable. Yeah, that, I mean, that, thing, that really... thing had to conduct heat too, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, it had to get well, hot it, as hell. Well, it, I well, I don't know. I've never worn it in a fire, but uh, mm. used to I, get I used warm to feel my there. chain on my neck burning me. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it used to a, get hot. It must have looked like, like a match, match stick. That thing must have been glowing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could see him. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, get get Nigel out of there. His head's glowing. Come on, get you him out. Your, you can light your cigarette off his head. <laughs> Fry an egg, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> My yeah. word. Whatever. Uh, so, well, I, you know what we want to talk about, too, a little bit, Nigel? I know you said you weren't – well, we know you weren't around by then, but – uh, we wanted to talk about the uh, the bombings. Uh, yeah. okay. They were bombing not only London, but they were bombing Sheffield as well because yes. of, oh, of the steel production, right? Yeah, well, on the 12th of December, 1940, uh, okay. the, there was a thing, well, Sheffield got blitzed, basically. And uh, instead of bombing the East End where <laughs> all the steel plants were, they bombed the city centre and they killed 600 people on that one night. And uh, they made uh, uh, forty thousand people homeless. Wow! And uh, injured th three thousand, and destroyed thirty uh, three thousand houses in one night because they dropped that much uh, crap on on the city centre and and the, uh, the where the domestic properties were. So wow. yeah, yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. Nigel says he knows somebody. We're actually gonna do a show on the on that time because they were losing okay. guys, a ton of guys every night to fires. Man, it was oh insane. Well, on that night, they lost uh, six guys. One professional fireman called uh, Frederick uh, Spencer Parks, or is it no Frederick Parks Spencer? He got. He was a thirty-five year old uh, Sheffield City fireman, and then there was five other auxiliary firemen that got killed as well on that one night in Sheffield. Uh, the uh, I know the uh, Fred Spencer got uh, um, a direct hit. <clears throat> he was uh, wow. on, the, on, the, on the corner at... Uh, I mean, how many, nights, how, how many nights were they bombed in London? That that was over a course oh, it, of... It was colossal. Like, yeah. London, so, London was... Can, so can you imagine being a fireman and going out there and fighting fires and not knowing if they're dropping more bombs on you, if they come in or... You know what I mean? It's like the job is dangerous enough without worrying about... Uh, Getting another bomb dropped on yeah. you while you while you're fighting fires. No, there, well, there was a lot of a lot of guys killed that because they were out there in the streets getting you know putting the fires out. Yeah, yeah. You, yep. you know, these pictures of uh, of, rig, of fire trucks blown blown all over the place. You know, it's uh, and there's a famous picture of a couple of guys getting killed uh, when the walls coming down on them. It's a famous painting. I can't really? remember the artist, but uh, it's quite a evocative painting of uh, two firemen getting well under a collapse just before Look, they're going to get crushed yeah right yeah. what uh what did churchill used to call them something like dirty faced heroes or something like yeah, that it, or it is, uh, heroes with grimy faces he heroes yeah. with grimy faces churchill it, called it, them. there's a book out uh, <laughs> well there was a book a pamphlet and I, i'd just like to say that um the fdny actually started the, the fire service national benevolent fund uh because some new york firemen came over well, new york officers and firemen came over to london to see how um we were coping with the blitz you know with the bombings and the fires and they saw that none of the firemen were getting any uh, any any benefits or get any money so they they went back to new york and had a collection and that contributed to starting the national the fire brigade's national benevolent fund oh wow back in 19, <coughs> sorry, the fdny actually uh, assisted the uh, the firemen of, uh, of uh, in the London. 40s yeah in the 40s yeah 
Wow. And that's still going on today? It's, that's... It, it's called the Firefighters Charity now, but it was the, the Fire Service wow. National Benevolent Fund. Yeah, so it's uh, it was now, all down to you guys over there to uh, that contributed to a fund. Thank you. Were you were you born in Sheffield or where were you from yeah. originally? Oh yeah, no, I'm were... I was born and bred in Sheffield. So w was your were your parents around during the the bombings and stuff? Yes, or... uh, my, my father was uh, was he, he got uh, he got uh, conscripted in was it 1944? He was on uh, D Day plus plus four. He was in the uh, Alamshire uh, regiment. Wow. <clears throat> and, uh, he was in, in a place called Khan, uh, fighting there. And my mother so, was a young girl, but uh, my, my grandfather was an air, an air raid warden, and he used to go into the roofs of uh, the terrace property, throwing the incendiary bombs that they dropped uh, uh, out of the roof. So the wow. they wouldn't there. catch on fire. No oh, shit, yeah. man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. So that was one of the tales that me, me mother told me about my grandfather. Yeah, he, uh, brave, brave. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I'll make you proud, right? No yeah, doubt. Did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, no doubt. You have brothers and sisters, Snowy? Yeah, I've got one sister. Yeah. <clears throat> so w w would your mother tell you stories about the time that they were bombing and stuff? Like, did she pass yeah, down? She, she didn't say much. No. And my, father's ne my, mother, my father never told me about his... Uh, his wartime. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he didn't want to he, talk about he, it. He didn't want to talk. He's just one of those guys that was that just took it on the chin and, you know. He, right. Uh, he, he, he did suffer, though. I know he did. My right. uh, my wife's grandfather was uh, D-Day third wave or, four, really? or fourth wave, amphibious. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he was in a tank <clears throat> division. So he was like that, but he knows what a, a buff I was. And the guy opened up. And when he did, man, it's... Uh, you know, he was sniped by a German sniper, you know, when he came Jeez. into the hedgerows um, and he had his spleen. He was opened for six months at a hospital Jeez, in England. Open. He stayed open in order to let his insides heal and not get infected somehow. They had That's to keep so him much. open yeah, and then they had to yeah. stretch him back together. It wow. was, you know, and he stayed in England. So. Yeah. Those guys, that's a whole nother level. <coughs> and uh, I just want to share something that Tankamus Prime shared us with me just now in my uh, DMs here. And it's the image of what you were talking about uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Wow. Wow. Fighting the fire right there, huh? Look at those Thank son you, of a bitches. Th Tank, you're, you're Thank awesome you. for sharing that, buddy. You know, I've never seen that picture. Me neither. That's, that's incredible, man. Unreal. Unreal. Huh. We definitely got to do a show about that, then, man. There's got to be so many good pictures and so much. No, you know, I've been, I've been, I, just the other day, I started following somebody sent it to me. I don't even know who sent it to me, but I started following this Facebook page that shows you a picture from 1943, 44, whether it's in France or wherever it was. And you see the guys laying on the floor, they're walking on the street. And then the guy goes there and takes a picture of what it looks like right now. Oh, yeah. And he, he puts yeah. them side by side. And I'll tell you one thing, man. There are people walking past there that have no idea <laughs> that it was what went on. Nah. There, right. They have, yeah. you know, just yeah. even you if, you, if you if you didn't see the picture, you couldn't yeah. put it into your mind. You know, it's a picture of, of of a German with with a gun coming out. There's like, you know, three or four Americans yeah. Yeah. walking out of a, a, a house. That guy was in that doorway. And he, you could see the exact like bullet holes on the wall. It yeah. was just, it was an incredible. Uh, I, I, I enjoy watching it because. What is know, that it, on that you're watching? <clears throat> I, I'll send it to you. It's like I've, I've uh, seen, seen then it, and yeah. now or something. It's called then and now. Yeah. It, is, yeah, and now. It, it deals a lot with uh, you know France and uh, what it looks like. Well, I think you know, he's a French guy actually. Now yeah. that you say that, I think he is, and he goes through all of these towns, and you know, there's a tank on the road, you know, burned out. And now he takes a picture of what it looks like right there, you know, and it and there's obviously uh that's a great idea. So man. yeah, some of the buildings are still there that you could really, you know, make sure that it that's the spot, you know. Yeah. You could right. incredible stuff, really cool. I thought it was cool. Huh. Yeah. Just to, cool. just to think about what collectively the world went through at that time versus you know, other times like now, it's uh it's it's humbling when you see something like this that depicts something that these guys went out and did it's uh, oh my god it, it's yeah, bravery yeah. beyond words because it, is, absolutely. It, it, <clears throat> it just defies all human instinct to for self-survival i say this all the time I, I hate to get political on the show but you think about today 
like when the whole you know COVID thing started, and they were like, you know, you got to stay in the house. And people were like, oh my god, I got to stay in the house and watch Netflix and eat snacks and <laughs> you know what I mean. But what these people were going through in London or or, or anywhere, France, when they were yep. bombing the shit out of them every night, people were going down into the subways and to to sleep and you know, and you talk about what was asked of people recently it's those are the same people who couldn't crazy. who could they couldn't even get past the stacks of toilet paper in their house right exactly those son of a bitch yeah. yeah, <laughs> stacks of toilet paper animals yeah, totally animals yeah that's no why doubt. that's why we're gonna die as a as a as a, as a race is because we, we don't we don't do anything to get you know for for it's just all about you and that's it nobody cares you know what I mean it's just give me all the toilet paper you know I'll never use the toilet paper but I'm gonna take as much as you know, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think yeah. everyone will, Lou. There's still a contingent of hard people. And I, I would imagine that it was, uh, yeah, the, on the whole, your grandfather, Lou, knew more about, let's say, fixing his own house or right, his own right, car. Right. And then his, yeah. you know, his grandfather knew more about fixing his own house, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Well, you had to do that. Giving off the land, you know. But yeah. it's mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like it's bred in, man. But I think that there's always going to be a contingent of hard people. Um, if, so. you, if you look at Hope Britain, the, the working class of Britain, I, they're some of the hardest people on earth, mm. as you saw with mm. that. Uh, That's the greatest that, generation, right? Yeah. It's absolutely. Yeah, they are. They, Thank God they yeah. were there because mm. we'd be talking we, we, German. We, 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 what would we have now? What job? Lava's mine is Liebenings, Faber. Was ist das? Ja. Ja, I'd be okay. Mm. I'd be okay. So uh, <laughs> I'll show you something really cool here. Will Belinsky. Uh, in also hit me up in the DMs uh, with the then and now kind of stuff. So this is mm -hmm. really cool. Check this check this photo out. It's a trip. Since we're on the topic, I know it's not fire related. But it's being colorized out. as well. Oh yeah, yeah, mackerel. they colored it. Yeah, right. Like so, there it is. Like you know, troops and the. I'm just like saying, like that. Th those people that are walking with the kids, right? Yeah. It's just so difficult Brilliant. for you to imagine, like that the guys would were doing this here, and and the more I watch some of those things, it just. I can't stop watching it, wow. to be honest with you. Yeah, look at it. How crazy is this? Incredible. Incredible. So, so actually, Snowy, uh, a guy yeah. named Dave Port in the chat is asking how you got your uh, nickname, Snowy. Where, where and how did you get it? Ask that, bro. It's oh. right on my <laughs> Sorry, bro. Bam. Right. The 4th of September, 1969. Uh, we get transported from Chesterfield down to a place called Belper to pick our uniforms up. The guy that was driving them was uh, a leading fireman or a lieutenant, Nick Carter. And he turned around in uh, in the, uh, the personnel carrier and said, right, everybody's got a nickname in the fire service. He says, <laughs> your hair's white. You're called Snowy. And that was it. That was so, it. So from 4th of September, 1969. You had Snowy. white hair back then too? Yeah, exactly the same. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I still got hair. You <laughs> nice. son of a bitch, you. You got to throw that right in my face, right? <laughs> that's that's, that's for you. Why do you got to go with the head? Yeah. Oh, 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 you dirty son of a <laughs> so and so. Neither right. did you have, did you used to have the Fuma? Did you have it down here? This, this, the the uh, no, mustache? No, I, I, I did want to grow a, a rescue tash, but I never did. No. You never did it? I can't be bothered. It's like, okay, I've, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I've yeah. had a tash for a long, long time. Yeah, I had that when I first met my wife. That's the first thing I shaved. She was like, <laughs> "What is that thing on your face?" Was that, uh, was that was uh, that was that what she was whispering in your ear when you when you were in your locker and you felt she was like breathing on, on your neck? Your neck? Oh, she was breathing the hot breath on my neck. She'll never admit it, bro. <laughs> but she was breathing the hot breath. I'll, I'll talk to her right about on that. On the back of my just, neck. You, you, you went like this. Yeah. I think she wants yeah. a piece of coops. <laughs> I was like this. This one was. I was getting a shirt. I was like, <laughs> what, what, what is that huff on my neck? <laughs> he was really going, shave that freaking that's mustache. The, that's the benefit of being a commissary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? You know, what? 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 Uh, you know what I want to talk to you, you a little bit about before we get into your other stuff after you're on the job. You did a couple of things after that. Well, can I just say how I got interested can... in the FDNY? Oh, uh, but first, I wanted to ask you before the FDNY. How did you get interested in the fire service in general? Uh, it was my uh, back at school, my careers master, and Mr. Beatson. I used to like rock climbing and all that sort of crap. And uh, <laughs> and he said to, to me one day, uh, back in 69, basically, 
what are you going to do then? I says, uh, I said, I ain't got a clue. A motor mechanic, I don't know. He says, I might, I've got a leaflet here for you. Have a look at this. And it was a, a pamphlet, a careers pamphlet on joining the fire service. And he's got guys climbing up ladders, which is your, your scaling ladders. I <clears> that, looks a, that looks a really, really good way to spend a life, you know, earning money doing that. Yeah, I could yeah. cope with that. So that was it. So, Mr. Beatson, thank you very much, my careers master and library librarian. And uh, and I got into the... Uh, Isn't that amazing? That, yeah. How somebody could put you on a path for the rest Absolutely. of your life. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God bless him. He's probably yeah. Dead. Yeah, yeah. dead. Oh, yeah, a long yeah. time ago. He was oh, an yeah. old guy then. Oh. He, was, he, he was an old guy oh, yeah. in 69. So, yeah. oh, What's shit. his name? Mr. Beatson. Mr. Uh, Beatson. I, Salud, yeah. brother. Salud. He, I can tell you, Mr. Beatson ain't no wanker. That's for hey. sure. No, he's not. God bless him. <sighs> nice. All right, so tell us how you got interested in the FDNY then, bro. Uh, 1972. I was sat on duty at Chesterfield on the 27th of September, and the telly... Uh, program came on, Man Alive on BBC TV, British Broadcasting. Uh, the Bronx is burning, and it oh. was a, uh, it was that that absolutely I was in, I was awestruck. I mean, that is the place to go and learn to be a fireman. They're doing it continually, and that was that was my mission from then on, 1972 to be to go over and learn how to be a, a better fireman basically and that's what i did and if it weren't for ed Se Lu you know, lieutenant ed seary who was a fireman at 35 engine i met him at firehouse magazine uh, because i subscribed to that and i used to get missing and i wanted to go and pick some up and he right. was there and wow and pete, we have the rest is history him, there's a picture of him pete from 35 I, engine i got you stand by comment oop uh, I had another picture. They were doing a bit of work back in the day, too, up there, right? <laughs> what were they on 125th Street? Was that 125th Street? Yeah, yeah that's it. And, and third, yeah. Right. There was two firehouses right around back the corner from each other, yeah. right? Well, 36. Uh, they'd move, they'd move I, into the I, new house then. Uh, oh, all right. Back then. They, got, they, they were on the corner of 125th ah. and third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's taken by uh, Tony Pozzola outside. Me, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, outside engine 73 because we went to stood and stood by at La Casa Caca uh, uh, in the, in the South Caca. Bronx. <laughs> La Casa Caca. Yeah. Well, La let me ask La you a question, Caca. Snowy. When you first, you said 1972, you first got interested, right? Yeah. How long before you made your first trip across the pond? 1981. Okay. Oh, wow. So it took you nine well, years. It took, it, I, was a, I was a poor fireman. Hey. Yeah, no doubt. You know, <clears> I, I got gotcha. you. Well, you know, I, I want to know who Pito was when you finally did arrive here. <laughs> <laughs> Pito's the guy that gave the money for the uh, airline ticket. Have <laughs> 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 you seen the porn star? That's on going the in the blooper reels, Kevin. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. You see oh, what he had to do to get that airline ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Was that how to be first class then? <laughs> For the listening audience, we changed yeah, photos and there was some choice graffiti in the uh, 80s in yeah. the Bronx. Yeah. That was, that was, that was that, Featherbed Lane in the Bronx. That's you all the way on the left? Yeah. Come, look, at that, head, head, look at that head. Look at that bright ass snowy. Look at that look guy. At this man. What are you he's, guys dabbling over there? What are you dabbling Oh, in? he's got a little Budweiser. Bud, Budweiser. Oh. Budweiser. That was Budweiser. Easy. He's Who's going two for double fisted there. He's got one in both hands. <laughs> Look at him go. It's hardcore. Look yep. at that. I'm he's not going to lie. This is a badass. BI, BI, right? Are they on BI? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we're between calls. We're between alarms. And uh, that, would, that was. Uh, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Uh, right. Back of uh, Rescue 3, because we, we got a, 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 a trash can full of ice and beer. And we'd just we'd actually just come from a ball game uh, at a college. Um, in, I think it was in Inwood, and uh, the Bravest were playing uh, some some football against the college. And we uh, stopped there and had a few beers between I, going yeah. out. 
I can tell you one thing. Chief Steve would not be happy right now. I was going to say the same thing. A lot of nice. (laughs) I'm going to bought some white socks. Yeah. I bought a pack of white socks. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. White socks in a box. (laughs) So you you basically were on a a fact-finding mission, more or less. Mm -hmm. And and so, I mean, I guess the obvious question is, what what did you find? Well, um. I I, uh, I found the, the Halligan tool, and it took me 15 years to get the Halligan tool recognized in our brigade, in our, our fire service. Really? What yeah, were you using to force the door then? How would you force uh, the Crowbars, axes, you know. <clears throat> right. But uh, eventually we, we, we were able to attain it, and, uh, and uh, we, well, I've not looked back since, you know. So it Forcible was because, being it was my, because one of, my of you... That modern day UK firefighters are using the house. No, it's Chef, South Yorkshire. South Yorkshire. Okay. I'm not taking the credit for. The uh, whole no, no. Yeah, but if you weren't, if you weren't <coughs> out here, if you weren't out here because of P- Pito, uh, you you would have never, you would have never learned about that. So let's give you some credit. You know, uh, I mean yeah, that was a that was a tough flight to take. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I'd I'd rather yeah. be a wanker. Oh. Hey! Yeah, yeah, man. That's incredible. I mean, we actually have another photo of the Bronx, actual real real work here. You were, I guess you were at this one. Yeah, I we mean, that's, that's legit right there, yeah, man. Yeah, that's the uh, the sec- that was the, the first night we were there. Uh, we went to a third alarm on Valentine Avenue in the Bronx, and that's what uh, occurred. Um, apart from uh, the satellite uh, unit came with a manifold, and I saw a firefighter get lifted over the bonnet of a car because the uh, the satellite to hose feed burst on the manifold. Oh, shit. I, I thought you were talking yeah. about Lou for a second there. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. he didn't get lifted that way. Oh, Pete. <laughs> I got to tell you, we're, we're doing a great job on Pete because that was right here, Pete. I almost got it out of my mouth and you grabbed it. Good hey, man. You, spider. He's coming around. He's coming no, around. No, 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 no. Listen, spider. you guys don't think I pay attention. I'm paying yeah. attention, man. That's this is yeah, I, so, love, I love this show. So, so yeah, don't so, walk. There you go. Don't, man, don't, don't walk. walk. What a great shot, man. Honestly, one of the best. And wait, where was the other? How thing? long would you spend there, uh, Snowy, when you went there, like at ten, a time? We, I spent 10 nights at uh, Rescue 3. Wow. Thanks who was to, there? Uh, Do you remember who, who was there? Oh, yeah. I've got, oh. I've got a list. Well, Peter was there. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, hey. Hey. He goes without saying. Uh, just bear with me a minute. Now, for yeah. all those listening at home who haven't had the ability to see the image, there's a really choice image of uh, of some graffiti there, that, and the guy's name is Pito, and there was things involved with Pito. In <laughs> so tune into the YouTube channel if you're listening, if you want to find out. Well, uh, Lieutenant Joe Spore, senior, he was uh, one of the leading, uh, one of the lieutenants. Uh, Lieutenant Amira, Lieutenant McKean, and then with Ed Seary, uh, Jack Conrad, uh, Eddie Vanderwide, John Schneibel. Uh, Tommy McTeague. Uh, okay, he's going to be on next week. Yeah, I just told him that this week, Thursday. Oh, this right? week, Thursday, Thursday, yeah, yeah, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. And, Thursday. And there's a picture of Tommy looking like Benny Hill in my fire coat. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Find that one. And then there's uh, John Hendry, uh, Gene Shearer, Bill Cody, uh, John Cotter. Oh, Pop Hannon, uh, Dick Hannon, Pete Ortel, who did the uh, who did there a lot of is. carvings. Uh, that's so funny. He's doing Hans a Benny Hill. Murphy and uh, John <laughs> Roy. Uh, that's well, who I met uh, in the ten days. So some of some of the audience members right now are wondering, and it's very in depth here that uh, if you picked up any bad habits and used cheaters in the UK or rebreathers, <laughs> um, I, I I couldn't understand why you you'd use a cheater because. Uh, one of the old BA sets that we used to use, we used to use a thing like that called a, uh, the mouthpiece. It was a gag. And uh, you used to bite it like you do a cheetah, but then you put nose clips and a set of goggles on uh, on a Mark V Proto set, which is a, a oxygen set rebreather. And I couldn't understand why you guys got a full face mask. And then <laughs> took it, took your lung divan mouth back and put a, a gag in it. And it's like, holy shit, what, why would you do that? But it's you guys do different things and 
we wouldn't be allowed to do anything like We're that. We're the same, but it's our uh, breathing apparatus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I could never get used to it, bro. Oh, I, like be, I'm breathing up, right? Yeah, I could never get used to it. I, it was so much easier for me to just put the face piece on, bro. And that was it. I just well, I couldn't yeah, get used exactly. to it. Snowy, I mean, you know, like right around the time you took this photo, right when you when you first were introduced to all of this New York firefighting. <laughs> What did you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just firefighting. But really, what what were you? What were you? What were you noticing? Were the main differences and the similarities? And you know, what was the experience like for you in terms of um, gaining more knowledge that you could take back home to the UK? <clears throat> well, it, it was just the, the the brotherhood and the professionalism and the and the commitment that you guys have got. And, um, in the job, you know, the um, the camaraderie was absolutely second to none. You know, um, the the tactics and the, um, uh, the 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 SOPs. You know, we've got different building construction um, to you, so a lot of your tactics is being developed because of your wooden frame and your structures and your flat roofs and. And the way that your cock lofts or your roof voids are constructed, and I understand uh, why you you've gone down that road of removing bulkhead doors and cutting a an old uh, above the fire at certain buildings. So I, I know exactly why we can't do that because of our building construction, construction because of the right. slate roofs. You know, you can't walk on a slate roof. Mm. You've got to have a ladder on it. You've got to put a roof ladder on it. Hmm. You, you, or should just pass through the slates, and uh, it's it, gonna it, be like an ice skating fine. rink or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, it's just totally different uh, building constructions. I, I like the way that you move in with your, your your aggressive interior attack. I've always I've always felt that's the only way to deal with fires. You know, aggressively. You know, you don't let it chase you. You chase it. You push hmm. it. You push it out of the, you know, of the vented uh, window or whatever. You know, that, that's uh, that's exactly what I wanted to learn how to do by watching you guys. It was the first time I'd ever seen a, an aerial ladder put a, a window through like it did. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. You know, Anthony, right? turn, yeah, yeah. I was an aerial appliance driver, and it was like, shit, he's actually ramming that head of that ladder through that window. I'd have got a right screw in if I'd have done that with our aerial ladder. You know, they'd have gone bananas. What do you think you're doing? Pushing a, uh, you know, your head of your ladder through that window. like that. You know? But I, I could understand where you were coming from with the venting and the moving. That was a common it, thing. I mean, it's still yeah. a common thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I, Nigel, uh, Nigel uh, Anthony Gonzo in the chat is asking um, if the American fire, did it look at you? <laughs> you gotta play it, Pete. Pete, you gotta play it, bro. Don't you uh, have that? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. He has that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't have that He's one. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Don't yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> it did look at you, didn't it, Nigel? He's, uh -oh. got he's buffing out. What's he got? Oh, oh he's buffing out. He's buffing Buffer! out. He's buffing he's buffing not out. bad. Not bad. You know what I was just? You know what I just noticed, Nigel? Yeah, I love New York in a back you door. Got, no, the uh, <laughs> all of Paulie Hoshagen's medals are hanging on your on your yeah, behind your that's, head. That's it. That's Ed Series poster. That, <laughs> yeah, that's the same poster, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that man. was so funny when we got Paul with that. I'm like, Paul, what's that? All yeah. your medals hanging in the back? <laughs> yeah, that was funny, bro. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So what are some of the other trips that you had? Who else did you meet when you came? Because uh, we oh. know you met the Godfather. And the Godfather, the Godfather. Oh, oh, the shit, Godfather yeah. came yeah. and saw you too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. He came to London. Yeah, and, well, we uh, us came, come he over. came and watched the, uh, the Saints uh, play football at uh, Wembley. Yeah? Oh, yeah. there he goes. Uh, that was uh, the Father's Day uh, memo memorial fire uh, presentation. I met um, uh, Freddie there, and I also met um, Dan Nigro. Um, oh, yeah, that was with the big wigs. Yeah, well, you know, snowy. you've got a name drop now and again, aren't you? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, cool. you know, I, I was there at the uh, when they uh, unveiled the uh, the painting and the uh, the plaque to uh, Harry Rescue Ford Four. And, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah, that's it. Uh, Dave Rayner. Dave Rayner. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. I knew. Rock uh, climber. Rock climber. Who else you got? Nick? You got the, Richie um, Sarge, Sarge, Richie Eula. Yeah, Richie Eula and uh, Jack Corcoran. Jack Corcoran, great guy, man. Great and, guy. Uh, but I, I can't, can't remember the guy on the left. Who's the guy on the left? I can't remember. I can't see his face. I don't, I, don't know. I don't remember who that is. Maybe it's a guy from 292 jumping in the picture. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, the, know. Word, the word on his street is, too. <clears throat> somebody else. Oh! Oh, hey. there he is. The hey, himself. Michael! Hey! What's going on, Milner? What's going on, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> He's got his Bernadette Peters. <laughs> I mean, you got around. I mean, I, 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 you got okay. the Bernadette Peters perm going on. <laughs> got white socks. <laughs> All Always Jewish going against the grain, Milner. Always going against the grain. He did get That's around, so though, you know? <laughs> Is that the Z no? That's not the Z man. That's trainer. And who's the guy yeah. in the back? Is that the Z man in the back? No, no, I don't think it's so. Not, it's not. Is it the Z man? Initially, like I thought it was Brindisi, but it's not him. I can't see who the hell that is. I don't know who that is either. I don't know. Huh. Hmm. I think I think it was stood by from uh, it were detailed. Trainer was a good guy. Jimmy too, Trainer. Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I remember Jim Trainer. Yeah, because I, I met John Dillon as well, the Duke. Yeah. Duke. Yeah. I've got a story about that as well. Uh, one of the one of the nights uh, we, I was riding with Paul, I uh, sat in the front with John Dillon, D John Dillon, and uh, I can't remember the guy's name who was driving, but we were going to a um, a, a traffic accident uh, somewhere further into near the village near the Queen's Village. Uh -huh. We were going down Queen's Boulevard, and uh, we were going in the fire lane. And uh, there was a vehicle in front of us that was, you know, restricting his progress. So John Dillon got under the uh, PA and goes, "Hey, you in a black fucking car? Move out of the fucking fireway!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <clears throat> fucking brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> brilliant! <laughs> I know I loved it, Duke. <laughs> yeah, it, it was absolutely awesome, that guy. Actually, yeah. somebody somebody in the chat figured out who this guy in the uh, background was. It, that? That's they were saying it's Pedo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, he came to trip over here, Pedo. <laughs> Richie Schmidt, but that's too early for Richie. No, Schmidt. it's not Richie. Richie Schmidt. So, so you know, this is this brings us to something really interesting here, also in the chat. Um, and, and Timothy Jones is asking. This is a great question, of course, Pete. From my understanding, UK fire tactics are completely different from American high pressure attack lines versus one and a half inch hose. And can you ask why the tactics are so different? Well. It's um, uh, the UK have got a, a weird and wonderful way of uh, developing uh, firefighting. I, I I don't agree with a lot of the stuff, um, which is controversial. They use a uh, what the you call booster reels, uh, we call we call hose reels, and uh, we use a lot of high pressure hose reels now, uh, which are uh, ni nineteen mil with three quarter inch hose. And uh, it, it only gives uh, 90 liters a minute, which is around about 20 gallon. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and it's to me, it's uh, there's not enough water coming out. Holy mackerel. Ah. You're, better, so, you're, you're yeah. better off just pissing on it. I was yeah. going to say, that's a, that's a garden hose. Yeah, three quarter inch yeah. to garden hose. Yeah. So, you know, um, I'm a great. Well, what do you mean, high pressure? What does that mean? It's, it's it, pumped it, up? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the, you can go up to about uh, 20 bars. Uh, which is I, I I've got to look up uh, some of the facts because I've been retired eighteen years, so I'm I'm a bit rusty on the so the, so on a regular for a one room job or something like that that would work. I a, mean, it, it works be a good, reel. right? Be a whole reel, yeah. That's so what what, what do you do when you show up and there's an entire factory going? You well, don't pull you that know, thing hopefully, off. Hopefully, you get the guys getting the uh, the uh, seventy mil or sixty five mil hose off with the uh, the appropriate nozzle, you know, branches nozzles. So yeah. But uh, interesting. They, they, they seem they seem to like to use the uh, hose reels a hell of a lot, which I how uh, how much hose is on the reel? Um, a couple think. hundred feet. 
yeah, basically. Uh, but I think it's a three three sixty three sixty. Yeah, about one eighty. Yeah, one eighty two hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you better make sure you don't sit short. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's easier to make up, you see, because it's rewind hose reels. You know, you've got a a, a, a rewinder. It on seems no, like no, more, I got that part, but if you don't reach the room, then what yeah. the hell are you going to do? It seems yeah. like more of a convenience thing than anything. Yeah. Man. Easy yeah. to pull, easy to pack. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I, I, we used to use a hell of a lot of three quarter, uh, one and three quarter. You know that was our. Uh, that was our. Uh, but you had to estimate the stretch, team. basically. Yeah. So that's. I mean, right. so you're getting right there. Yeah, but all our all our hoses roll, rolled up. You know, like donut. It's. Um, oh, I got it. It's not yeah, like we, we have it. That's, we don't. We don't have it flaked like. Well, we used to have some flaked uh, to deploy off either side of the rigs back in the seventies and eighties. But then we went to rolled. Um, but that's another. That's another explanation. We use rolled up or we use dutch rolled which is like it's a bite that's rolled on itself where the couplings are on the external side of the roll so you can just throw it out the uh, london fire brigade use that hmm. predominantly uh so hmm. you get a bite uh like a double uh hose uh length uh in a bite so you've got one one in a male and a female uh in your hand so and then you run off with it. So there's a lot. Do a lot of uh, European countries do that? Yes. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, they use Dutch mm. roll a lot, and uh, France uses um, reels of delivery hose. They have theirs on the back of the trucks, and the and it's like a uh, like on a cradle. <clears throat> run down the road with a cradle with the wheels on. I know. Here's the biggest difference that you probably fell in love with, right? When you went to the FDNY in New York. That high low shit siren over in Europe, bro. Come on. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't wait to get I couldn't wait to get the sirens and the bullons. We yeah. we you know we, we got bullons quite early on after oh, did you? from New York. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. The chrome ones <laughs> on the top of the ring. Oh. Yeah. And I, I love remember the uh, re remember rescue three having the railway horn. We had one too, uh, man. Yeah, on the top of their uh, Mac. Yeah, because uh, uh, there's a there was a story about that because when they first put it on, uh, they they uh, rigged it up to the brakes, the brake compressor, and uh, as they were turning out, the 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 you know they they opened the, uh, uh, they, they turned the siren on, it blew the windows out of the. the, the shops in front of the to the firehouse and seized really? the fucking. Uh, Brakes on the rig, so they broken all the windows in front of it, and they, they couldn't get anywhere because couldn't get anywhere. The we, had, we had it hooked up to a Scott bottle, right? Rook? Yeah, that's what they yeah. did. If they, you know, and they, I had yeah, it, yeah. I, I had yeah. the thing in my hand, so when I was yeah. driving, dude, I used to blow people off the corner. Like if somebody was sitting there, like not paying attention, and I was people blowing, would I run for their life. People <laughs> yeah. would yeah. run for their <laughs> lives. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Have a great. railway on. We used to yeah. cross from 69th Street. We used to cross over Queens Boulevard. Yeah, Queens Boulevard is what? It's two, three, three, and two. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. ten lanes of traffic. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, everybody would stop as you were coming through there, man. Yeah, ten man. lanes of traffic. I've seen it. I've seen yep. you guys come through Queens of Yeah, I, I, I was sat one night watching the traffic go into Manhattan and out of Manhattan at 4 a.m. We've come back from a run. And uh, I was I was absolutely amazed how many red lights were going, you know, either, you know, white lights coming back, yep. red lights going in to Manhattan down Queens Boulevard. You were like, oh, my God. Shit, crazy. This, this city never sleeps. No. Nope. No. Nope. Brilliant. Nope. And it's worse. Awesome. It's worse now. <laughs> it, really? It's crazier now. Believe me, no. it's crazier. Um, but I, th I, I thought that was really epic seeing that. There's yeah. one picture you sent us, Kev, and I think you you wanted to talk about this one. And it's what went on in the juniors. What did you call this? Oh, that's oh, the, right. uh, that was our uh, recruits. Well, the junior fireman's passing out parade. We had to do a, a big uh, sort of a drill, uh, and uh, that's what uh, that's what we did. We had smoke, and all all the parents came. Oh, like a probably school, yeah. right? Right, right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I thought uh, passing out like they would work you whole so hard to pass <laughs> out. Like the that's what I, like uh, the Navy SEALs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah like no, hell, that was Hell Week. No, that that was just a, a celebration of his 
uh, nice. being able to use the, equi the equipment uh, and, you know, yeah. basically that's it, you know, but hey, Shit. and that's where I first used up ladders, the, that tower. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Is that building still there? Do they still use that or it's all new? No, that's now? gone. The, the, yeah. the building. Ah, they got bombed, the they got bombed in the war, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was only 1971. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, yes. Uh, on, books, we've got a new fire station now. What other? Uh, so you, you, it looks like four and three rescues. What else? What other rescues did you ride in? Uh, rescue one. Oh, you did. Who was working yeah, there? Uh, what year was uh, that? Uh, did you... but, but 1986, I think it was. Did you meet Fred, the living Fred legend? Was... Uh, I didn't, no, I didn't meet him. I never met what? him. What? I mean, what are you doing? I met uh, uh, Gary Guidel and Mickey Guidel. Oh, his daughter's in the chat, man. Yeah, she's Tilly's. Great. Tilly's on yeah, the yeah, chat. I've seen, yeah. seen uh, Tilly. Yeah, yeah she's done a good book, hasn't she? She's got a book out. Yeah, we're going to have her on, I think. Yeah. Yep. And, Did you meet uh, Senior the, Dude? Hank, Hank Malay? No, I didn't know. No, it uh, was better, well, better off. I think, yeah, I think it was uh, somebody <laughs> stole it. He was probably cleaning something. <laughs> <laughs> he used to clean everything. That guy cleaned him. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cliff Stabner. Do you remember? Oh, him? I love Cliff, Cliff Stabner. Man. He's a he funny was, guy. He was there. Yeah. And uh, Stan Cecina. Oh, I remember Stan. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, he don't got, smile much. Uh, got James Gordon Bennett medal, didn't he? Stan. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, they did, a, they did a water rescue while I was there uh, on the East River. No shit. Uh, oh, that's off, cool. Uh, off the Manhattan Bridge. Wow. Um, Stan Cecina was the uh, the diver, and uh, Mickey Guidel was the uh, uh, the backup, and uh, they went in and recovered a body basically because he was a a druggie that jumped off the Manhattan oh, Bridge. Oh, Morta. He's and, a Morta. Yeah, and <clears throat> Freddie Freddy was the uh, the the officer. boss. Yeah, there was a boss. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what the hell was this? So you never rode rescue two? No, I didn't, I didn't get into it. Wow. Hey. Come on. What, the borrow of fire? Say? You come all the way from what, England. You don't run the fire? What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> hey, Forget listen. The guy's it. been in three. He's been in three out of the five. Come on. All yeah, right. You want. I've, been, I've been to see Rescue 5. You've been to see Rescue 5. Yeah. All right. Yeah, when Jack Calderon was. Uh, oh, he's a good guy, Jack Calderon. Yeah. Uh, so I met somebody, Jack. somebody was asking if you've ever been to a wet down. I don't know what a wet down is. Hmm. Uh, Isn't that when they do something? I think when they when they christen a pump a new it. rig. I think yeah. you're right. I think yeah. you're right. That's a no, wet I've down. Never a, no, I've never been to one of them. No, I thought it was like when they take the a bottle of uh, booze, right? I christened the the flying wasp. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He's like no. The no. Come, the the helmet. Come nah. to the oh, oh, you wanker! <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh. Okay, my God. So, so you retire in uh, what year? Two thousand two thousand and three. Two thousand and three, thirty some odd years. Let's see, seventy one. Thirty four years. Seventy one plus carry three minus four. 14, the square root of 30, 34 years. Okay. <laughs> then you get into um, oh, let, let's talk about the uh, museum that you started. Well, yeah. Um, did I? Did I, vote, did I, did I tell? Have I said anything about the? Uh, the trip to Duane Street and engine seven, seven ladder one. Ladder one, right? Yeah. You go there. You... I saw. I saw. Uh, well, that was back in 1981 when right. um, we started a, a historical society back in the uh, in South Yorkshire, and uh, I went to the museum out of interest uh, on Duane Street, and uh, I, I was walking round uh, with my ex-wife then, but. That's enough said about that. It happens. Uh, and uh, we went into the onto the top floor, and there was a load of kids um, sat in the theatre seats that they'd uh, refurbished and put up there, watching Jiminy Cricket and uh, teaching the kids out of you know fire safety, basically. And I thought, what a way to teach kids fire safety! Mm -hmm. You know, Jiminy Cricket uh, in an old firehouse. What what an awesome 
thing to do. So I came back and uh, had a word with a couple of senior officers and I knew there was a fire a fire station uh, that was derelict uh, in our area, uh, West Bar. And uh, it uh, it was it was there for the asking. So we approached the council and we were able to uh, take possession of it. Oh, no shit, uh, man. And uh, in 1985, we opened it up as a, a fight museum. Wow. Uh, emulating uh, uh, New York's, uh, well, you were, you moved into Spring Street from Dwayne Street. Right. And uh, what a, what an awesome uh, museum you've got. And this one's not bad. And I, it's I still there? Everything's still there? It's, it's still there, but it's under different management. It's under um, uh, different people are running it now. So it's Dude, called that's the a lot Emerita. of work. That's a lot of work to do that. Yeah. Well, we you, we, you, we, we started at the top, and uh, there was a, loads of pigeon guano everywhere because it had been derelict, mm. and it was just a shithole. But uh, it, it, and a lot of walls needed scraping, and it's been taken back to the old tiles and the old bays. And that's wow. cool. We got the old uh, pole shoots out of Division Street Fire Station when that shut down in 1990, and uh, put them up in the uh, the old station because the pole holes were still there. When was the last uh, time you went there? Um, five. Oh, you five, haven't been there five. in a while. No, I've not been there in a, a long while. No. You know, hmm. bit of a hey, bit of a know. disagreement. Ah, ah, the sour sour grapes. Ah, I got you. Ah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, what what was the what's the work like uh, the work schedule like there like do you guys work twenty uh, fours like us do you work no uh, no this, you... this is what I can't understand because the 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 guys are, are do twelve hour days and twelve hour nights now and it'd be so easy to do a you know a, a twenty four and I always thought you guys have got it you know home and dry you know you you, you come in for a a, a twenty four and you go over for you go home for two it's like yeah, yeah. or three yeah. yeah well yeah. Because you know you do two days, one off, three, two nights, three off. Yeah. Well, we did we did two days, two nights, four off, and uh, and and now that that was when we were working uh, nine till six and six till nine. We had a a nine hour day and a fifteen hour night, basically. So uh, they, now they've they've regulated it down to twelve and twelve. They start at eight in the morning and finish at eight at night. And uh, you know it's a twelve-hour period, so it'd be easy to do, but nobody's nobody's. So if they do it twelve and twelve, how many days are they off after two day tours? Uh, no, they go for two days, and then they have that day off, and then start the night at say eight o'clock the next night. So and then they're off, and then they're off then for four. They, yeah, then they do two nights, and then go for hmm. go for four off. Yeah. Do they do mutuals? Can you swap or no? Oh yeah, you, you can you can do it. so long as you've got the same qualifications and the same, right. you know, you know. There was a story about a guy wanting to swap, and he, he got a guy come in from a, uh, and he weren't even a fireman. He just said, "I'm standing by for this." Guy. I was like, "What? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm here for this guy." This you is know. why you're not doing twenty fours. I'll tell you that. Exactly. I don't know much, but I know yeah. why. <laughs> Hey, aren't you the guy that works down the street in the bagel store? Hey, yeah, Herbie. Yeah. Herbie from the bagel like, shop. Come on over here. Can you stand by for me? Yeah. <laughs> Can you work for me on Saturday? I got a party. <laughs> but, I, uh, but I make pizza. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> when you get in there, make a pizza. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> Guys will be happy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, so we get past, we got past the uh, – oh, where was it? The fire the museum. We're done with those wankers. They're, they're yeah. Gone. Hey. Oh. Hey. So after that, after you retire, you go to you get another job in the uh, what is it S Y F R? What is that? South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Technical Services. Oh my goodness gracious! That's, Sounds very uh, high priority. It's the, same, it's the same fire department, but uh, I go as a civilian. I was, so you're I was, you're a, you're you're in charge of the equipment and the apparatus purchases plus yes. PPE, thermals yeah. and cameras, right? So that you that that time doesn't count. Towards your pension, but you said no, not the fire service pension. I've done with that one. I've re retired from the operational side. Right. I had a couple of years off, right? Uh, between, and then I was asked if I'd like a job in technical services. So I applied, got uh -huh. the job, 
as a technical services guy. And then a couple of years after that, the manager retired and I took over from him. So I ended up retiring as the tech, ser tech services manager. But I wow. didn't start off as the tech services manager. I went in as a just a normal guy, as a civilian. So you, were, you were probably the guy that you cleaned the toilets first, and then you yeah. went to what? Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know what? You run the joint. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Clean the toilets, I've got, I've got five those... million dollar rigs. I don't know. I, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm quite good at ablutions. Yep. Yeah. So 15 years you did that. That's a that's a long time, man, right? Is that what you said? No, no, I didn't years? do 15. I, I did... Oh. I did uh, Seven, eight, eight years. Oh, eight. oh you, got, you got there in 2015. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what were some of your accomplishments there? What did you bring over to the fire service there that they weren't going to bring over? Um, basically, um, we did uh, brought back aerial ladders. Right. They, they, went, they went on to a, a boom concept. Right. And uh, I, I've always liked me, uh, me aerial trucks. You know, I'm a, you know, a turntable ladder guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, got the, we got that back 100 foot uh, aerial ladder uh black fire kit um we got black fire kit back into the job instead of uh, that uh, brown ready pinky stuff um we have oh the bunker gear yeah yeah the bunker gear it's yeah. uh the photo is a little rough but you can kind of get the picture there you're on the left in your black New York. Gear. yeah yeah your new york i was able gear. to get a, a set of uh, new york fire kit so it's amazing. Yeah, so I was. Uh, that's that's what I used in my flashover and backdraft training. Oh uh, right, you did that too. Where the hell did I, yeah. I miss that? Where was that? Was that in between the? Uh... That was that was still as a fireman, still as operational. I uh, I, I gave that in at uh, two thousand and three because uh, I was getting too old. You know, oh right, right, right. Flashover and backdrafts in ninety five through to yeah, you and yeah. I went to two thousand three. So you yeah. came up with that whole program, the, the flash over? No, 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 no. I, I was, I was part of it. Uh, right. A guy called John Taylor and uh, uh, Paul Grimwood, they, they, uh, they sort of devised uh, training, and I, I just came along and and uh, participated. And, uh -huh. and I, I was an instructor. I was, I was helping them because uh, we, we went uh, all over the country. Looking at different rigs and stuff, and we had people come to uh, Manchester Airport, mm -hmm. um, where the uh, the containers were, and uh, we we trained a lot of departments. You know, a lot of guys came to uh, uh, to to experience it, and it was great. I used to love it. it I did it in my part, you know, in my time off. Mm. Oh, you know, I did you... No, I did it uh, as a hobby. Oh, wow! <laughs> you know, All right. I, I, I just, I just liked. Um, ah, Lou likes to kill, Lou likes to kill fuzzy little animals. You like to do backdrafts. All right, I hear you. Exactly. <laughs> All right, oh everybody's got a hobby. Everybody's got a hey, hobby. You gotta right. do something. <laughs> you gotta, gotta do, do something. Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so seven years, and you got to pension for that, but you didn't tell the ex-wife about that one, right? <laughs> We'll keep that on the dialogue. What are, you, what are you doing with all the shekels? What are you doing with all these shekels? Oh, oh man. I'm buying, books. I'm buying books. Yeah. You're a book guy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like, see that. Uh, yeah, I like uh, uh, history books. Shit like nice. that. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Paul and Hashigan's books. Oh, they yeah. suck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't read that rubbish. Not only that garbage. Yeah. <laughs> no, Paul's great. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. And uh, what else are you doing with your spare time now that you're, uh, you know? I, I now read my books. Oh, now oh, you read right. them. So you used to so buy them, but now you read them. Now we read them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So do you, good, uh, do you like kids? Do I like kids? Yeah, because when we come over see, I got to find somebody to leave my kids with. So when I, <laughs> <laughs> I hate kids. Yeah, I, I hate, hate kids. kids. <laughs> I, I'm 68 years old. Uh, uh, all right, we won't come with kids. That will be a guy's trip. Me, Pete, and Lou doing a show uh, live from Sheffield. What do you can, think? Uh, we, we can do some right damage. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, man. Roadshow. Absolutely. Roadshow to Great Britain. Uh, somebody call Pedo. Maybe he can pay for our plane tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can hook up with him. If that's the only way we're getting to, uh, uh, to uh, London, listen. it's going to be a long swim. I'll tell you that. Uh, listen, uh, Ruffy, junior man, takes care of it, right? 
<laughs> PD, take care of the yeah, guy. PD. Take care of Peter, all right? <laughs> well, well, I'm hoping to get over to uh, to see Ed. Uh, the fuck is all right. Oh, so when you come I'll, in, bro, I'll, I'll be got... hooking up with you before you will come with us. So. Uh, when is that going right. to be? You no, know, whenever I can escape this country. Oh, oh right, you're on double secret probation over there, bro. Yeah, yeah. I hear uh, what you're saying. All right, right, that'll be soon enough. So maybe we'll make it, make it to you. Oh no, we can't. You're in lockdown. All right, we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll, we'll get over there. We got time. We got time. I got a lot of friends over there too. You know, God bless you guys. Well, you're 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 welcome any day. Cheers, man. You, you know, might you. regret that. Absolutely. All, of sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, this, this will be snowy. Oh, hello, who is it? Oh, is that bro? Hey, Moose, Rocco, <laughs> help the judge find his checkbook, <laughs> will you? Oh. 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 It's going to be snowy. Oh. I, I, I keep doing that to Ed. I keep doing that to Ed. I keep doing Hello, Ed. Uh, uh, hello, about. Ed. It's me, Snowy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Hello, Ed. It's Christ, that guy again. You're going to be doing the, uh, what's his name? The Man of Scalco. Get down. Everybody, get down. <laughs> <laughs> Do the army crawl. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. Uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. I think it might be that time of the night, though, there, yeah. uh, Mr. Snowy. You know what it is? It what is time is it, Pete? Of the night. It, it really truly is. And the hey, time you've of the had night enough is... of me. No, no. We <laughs> want a little more. Just a little more. Just a oh, tip. Just for a second. Just to see how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time for the old school tip of the day. Hey, hey. Right. Well, uh, Italian Chief Jerry Tracy. Um, uh, it, well, explained a bit about it, about backdraft and flash over. And, and I'd just like to reiterate a bit about um, uh, how to control gases and cool the gases and use the water uh, in the air tract uh, to get to the seat of the fire. Because that's what I learned in, in Sweden uh, about uh, flash over and backdraft um, uh, curtailment basically is and you put enough water on the fire to put it out and basically that's it you, you, you rotate your nozzle in a clockwise direction and uh, you push the fire out of the the uh, the vent or the open window or whatever you've made uh, to uh, vent the fire and that's all i can say it's taken 51 years to realize but it was a eureka moment when uh, when I realized that, that uh, putting the, the nozzle into the ceiling uh, was helping uh, control the gases and cool them down. But that's it. Hmm. Thank you very much. Well, you know what I it guess. is? Hold on, Coops. Well, yeah. You know, recently we've, you know, guys have talked about it a little bit. He said that, you know, when, I, when we first got on the job, you never opened the line on smoke, right? It was always you waited till you saw fire. Hmm. Now they say because – Things burn hotter, right? Fire is different. Yeah, Everything's absolutely. different. So okay. now it's good to, to to cool down the gas, right? It's good to to uh, to use the reach of the stream, all that stuff. So yeah. uh, you know, and then the more you know, we talked about it with the with the uh, the, the the flashover simulator and all that stuff. The container that that was a really great. I thought that that was one of the best things because you don't always get to see that. You know how often you can go to a lot of fires, but you don't mm. really get to see that. Too often, you know, you always see a little bit of fire over your head or, you know, licking or whatever, but to watch it really grow and to be in a safe place it's and brilliant. to have that happen. Yeah, it really is incredible. And then it, it shows you how far you can go and what you can't oh, it, when you when you should be getting out of there, you know. Yeah, totally. It gives you a, a total different look at, you know, your parameters, what you, you can stay or go. You know, Right, exactly. You, you know your, your limits. I and mean, everybody needs to know the limits because – Shit, it's too late. If, right, it's if, too late if, if you're learning for the first time, right? Absolutely. No you know, it's too late. <laughs> it, you know, you 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 uh, you work in fear, you're training fear, and that's I, that's what you can do. With I the, tell guys all the time when you're breathing hot air in your face piece. Yeah. Wrap yeah. it up. It's time to <laughs> go. It's time to go. <laughs> that's it. Um, this may have been the oldest old school tip of the day. Put the put the wet stuff on the red on stuff. On the hot yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, I want to say that. You say, favorite, and that, you, and yeah, stay low and go. You know, stay low. <laughs> stay, stay low, baby. There's, me, there's, baby. there's nothing better. 
because firefighters now they that they that encapsulated in the bunker gear or the fire kit. They walk they stand in. up. It's They're like, walking. What the f are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Get on your knees at yeah. least. Get on your knees. Yeah. Yeah. See under the see under the smoke. Have a yeah. look. You know? Ruffy, how many times did we used to go back to fires? You know, we'd we'd have we go buff out. We would see the hand box lined on the on the wall on the hallway. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. three no, four I, feet up. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> what are you doing up there? Get yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, sure. no doubt. Yeah, uh, you nice. know what I want to say? One more thing. You said it before. I don't even think you realize that was a great old school tip, man. It's like you said, uh, you chase it. Don't let it chase you. And exactly. Yeah. Great tip, you, man. yeah, you get control. You need control. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hopefully. Not many pirates with the spirit of Santa. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, for yeah. sure. So uh, you're going to have to control me when I get a couple of baskets of fish and chips over there, bro. <laughs> well, absolutely. Control. And I can take yeah. you to the best fish and chip shops. Yeah. Nice. I oh, like absolutely. it. Yeah. Man, I go on a cheat meal. You're in trouble, bro. Hmm. You're in trouble. <laughs> but I also like Italian. Oh, nice. When you now come over, cooking. Mama Rosa will make a nice little Rosie will make you a little tiny. Oh, she's there, the bro. best. She's got the oh, goods. Oh, she is the best, man. You want to come, but you like you like rice? You come to my yes. house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love rice. Because we got rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Thai. Thai. everything. I don't I like think Thai I ever cooking. ate rice at your house. Thai cooking? Yeah, I like Thai yeah, cooking. Yeah, I like too. Thai cooking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no sure. doubt. Oh, what a kick ass show tonight! Look, Snowy, you were afraid. This is a great show, bro. You no, you did good. You know, great show. Awesome. You never know. You got any you shout outs? You got fella? I do. Uh, no, I'm talking to Snowy first. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Rude. I didn't know. I'd like to uh, congratulate Jamie Hewison, PC Police Constable from the uh, Metropolitan Fire Metropolitan Fire Metropolitan Police Service. Or force who uh, completed 28 years service wow. on the 28th of February and retired. Give a little cheer. Uh, hey. he's, he's listening in. I know he's listening in. He was one of the best dog handlers in the Met in, the, in London. So he's a Bobby. He, yeah, he was. Uh, here's to you. Here's to you, Jamie. Jamie, good job, oh, brother. Nice. Cheers, man. Those guys don't carry guns, right? Oh, no. only special the cops special carry guns. The special, God, special cops God, who God. carry guns there. How wow. crazy is that? What else um, you got, Snowy? Anything else? Um, Let it out. Eddie, Eddie, Lieutenant Eddie Seary, who was my mentor, and my the, he guided me through my career, basically, because of what I've learned in New York and what I was able to uh, do in, uh, in South Yorkshire. Uh, Phil Castleton, uh, my brother... From a different mother. Um, he's uh, West Midlands. Uh, he's retired uh, breathing apparatus trainer, Batman. Yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be there, going what the, f <laughs> yeah, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and My then he's, guy. he's uh, Mike Milner. Hey, hey, he's the young, Mikey. Uh, with Murray. the salt low. Maury. And uh, Eddie, Eddie Monaghan. Oh, Eddie Monaghan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're moving on to the Irish. I don't have a, I don't have a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, Eddie Monaghan, Rescue 4. And ultimately, Freddy Lafamina. What can nice. I say? Nice. Oh. Godfather. The, the, the Godfather. Hold on. I got him. <laughs> Freddy. <laughs> you're a beautiful man if you're listening. What right can now. I say? And what else can we say? But you have been influenced. Off, refuse. You've influenced a lot of people. You're a very important man, Mr. Lufamina, <laughs> sir. Godfather. May I kiss your pinky what? ring? What the fuck can I say? What can I say? <laughs> Anybody nice else? Reading. No, that, that, I think that's about it. You that's know. it? Well, well right. done, Nigel. Well, well done. Like really good. nice. Really nice, brother. Snowy. What do you Great got, job. Louis? All right, what do you got, Ruffy? So uh, Thursday, we got uh, Tommy McTeague, Rescue 3. Uh, pipe band. He's been in the pipe band. I think he's close to 80. So uh, we're going to have a few pipe band guys with him. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm going to talk to uh, a couple of guys tomorrow. We'll square it all up. Hey, tell them to bring the bagpipes. We'll play a little Yeah, bag. maybe we can do a little pipe. Please, please uh, give him my regards because I know. I know. I Tony. will. I that will, won't be, uh, will. That won't be loud at my... all. That will not yeah. blow out anything. No <laughs> microphones. It'll be totally fine. Come on. Um, <laughs> 
Uh-huh. And on a on a sour note, uh, on a bad note, uh, unfortunately, uh, Keith uh, Nicolello, our guest, uh, thirty truck, forty years. His mom passed away. Uh, uh, so I uh, just uh, want to give out a condolences to him and his family. So uh, I like that guy. <clears throat> All right. I don't really. I don't have any shout outs. I ain't got shit. I got nothing. Well, That's it. One of what our got, uh, one of our esteemed uh, chat members who's in there every week from Australia, Chris Burke. Uh, saying, can the guys do a shout out to the firefighters and other emergency services that are doing a great job with the floods that we're having in New South Wales, Australia? So, shout yeah, yeah, out to yeah. all of them. It just seems like every so often, uh, Australia's in, uh, you know, it's underwater, it's under, you know, it's, it's, it's on fire, it's, it's unbelievable. So, you guys out there, um, big shout out to all the first responders out there doing a great work. Thank you. Stay safe. All right. Uh, oh, hey. I forgot. I forgot to mention one guy. I'll get in there. Paul Grimwood. Uh, he's a he's a fellow uh, flashover and backdraft trainer, and he's written several books. And he, he came over to New York in 1975, mm-hmm. and did six months of convent. And uh, we're again we're uh, we're good we're good buddies, and uh, he's he's done some really great work uh, on explaining the uh, fire behavior. Uh, <clears throat> training and everything. He's got, like I say, he's got several books out, and uh, he's such a clued-up guy. Uh, you wouldn't believe. Uh, retired London fireman. So uh, nice. He's another guy to. All right, uh, fella. But thank you. Thanks. Co- thanks Coobies. for that. Coobies, no. didn't, didn't you want to? Didn't you want to <clears throat> me to show an image of somebody no. special? <laughs> Lois I'm said gonna, to me, "I'm not letting I, that one go." Uh, I forgot. Can anybody guess who this is? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Uh, now that's that a Huckapoo shirt. That's what oh, we're talking about. Man, when we say Huckapoo was... shirt, that's what we're talking about. Look at that <laughs> lapel. Holy crap. Look at that <laughs> guy. Full head of hair. Saturday that? Night Fever. That yeah. is, uh, that's Danny Terrio uh, right there. Uh, 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 yeah. Stay alive. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's I him. Mean, the, the, the wings on an airplane that Colin. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's on the mend. He's getting around his little scooter. He's on. Right. He's on the mend. He will oh, not. Yeah. Let us, he will not yeah. let us do a show from his bedside. That won't happen. I wanted to do that, bring the puppet and have a little show from his bedside, but that ain't happening. So, my All right. word, no Mister, word. You yeah. know, Chief Steve. Come on, man. Do it for me. Do it yeah, for man. Your old, your, your old pal yeah. Peter. It's a creative yeah. endeavor. Come on. Give him my regards. I certainly will. will. All right, Pete, what do you got, fella? That's everything. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, um, just rocking and rolling, boys. Uh, another great week. Uh, Nigel, thank you for coming. And I uh, just want to say that it's a, it's an honor not only to share all this f- with people from around the world, but it's a sh- it's, it's, it's kind of shocking how a uh, few of us started this uh, not too long ago, and now we're, we have guys from the U.K. on here, you know, um, and from awesome. all over the world. You know, all the Aussies, the U.K., uh, we've we've had them from everywhere. So thank you guys everywhere around the world um, uh, for for tuning in. We really appreciate you. And I want to say also, the Rev and Shane G, you guys who were our first super chatters tonight. Thank you so much for contributing super to the show. That, that, chat. that does help. Uh, that was really kind as well. So guys, we do have the super chat. That is a uh, you know we really appreciate that. So thank you very much uh, to the Rev and Shane G, and also. Guys, you know the deal. You're watching us now on YouTube, but you should also be listening to us on iTunes Podcast, Spotify, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found. And, of course, if you are watching us on YouTube.com forward slash Get Salty Experience, take out your booger hook and hit the bang switch and give us the like, the scr- subscribe, Dang and the share. Tell the uh, YouTube algorithm that we are the only firehouse kitchen mm-hmm. table show amongst 20 others that are out there and that you like ours the most yeah. also guys they suck ass oh no 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 no. oh did i say that out loud? that was my uh, monologue i'm sorry no 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 was, yeah. they're good they're all good i love them all each and every one of them check that door for heat tim yeah so keep yeah. that keep that inner monologue on the inside sorry. all right guys instagram Guys, you'll find us at Salty Dog Inc. And, and Mr. Louie Refrano there, he is rocking the best fire photos in the game uh, at all hours of the day and night. So this man is on a mission. He's got he's got mm-hmm. fire in his eyes, and uh, he burns 
hundred dollar bills to light his cigars. So he's just trying to find b- find a way to burn a few more. Uh, so head on over there and follow us on uh, Instagram. And guys, uh, head on over to GettingSaltyApparel.com where you'll find the coolest firefighter apparel and accessories in the game. If you want to support us and support the show, you'll always shop there for your firefighter nice. gifts. Last but not least, email us at GettingSaltyExperience uh, at gmail.com. Mm. Uh, where if you ask a good question, a good one that is, uh, what was that guy? Smalley? Is that his name? Yeah, Smalley. Yeah, yeah, Smalley. We'll never forgive you. We're gonna have a show with Smalley on one day. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you ask all your questions in one show, yeah. Smalley, and then we'll we'll lose the entire channel. But anyway, there's uh, email us at getinsultyexperience at gmail.com. Last but not least, guys, I know there's a lot, but Facebook guys, head on over to the Get Insulty Fans page. Nothing that we did to start it. it it's is- eleven thousand. It's a shenanigan that whole page. Yeah, it's a it's living, crazy. breathing shenanigan. Yeah. And um, their shirts, their shirts coming out soon. I sent it to the printer. It's nice, coming. nice, guys. Amen. And everybody, that is all. Thank oh, you I wanted to say one more thing. I forgot. Gonzo, I'm letting you off the hook because I got an, uh, the girl in the office gave me a number of the guy Gonzo, who actually his name is Gonzo, and it is <laughs> it's a Suffolk County number. He wants me to call him. So Get out of here. I doubt I'm going to call him, but you're off the hook, Gonzo. All right. Nice. That's all I got. All right, fellas. We'll see you on Thursday night. Uh, Snowy, great job. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, really, yeah. it's been an honor, honor and a privilege to be it, able to talk to you guys. And it's all ours, whoever, brother. Whoever Likewise. wants to listen to this old fart. <laughs> <laughs> you well, made me likewise. laugh. Good job. Right, no, you did, a, you did a good job. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I really fellas. appreciate it. Yep. We'll talk to you in the after show. Stay okay. low and go, fellas. All right. We'll see you at the big one. Good night. Cheers. Cheers, brothers.